Good sir, sir. How you doing, brother? What's up? Great, my man. So another episode, another live. We still don't have a fully committed title or anything like that, but we're just gonna talk shop today. It might just be talk shop. So talk, I, talk shop sounds nice to me. Title will oh. come at either way. I'm with it. I'm with it. Talk shop. <laughs> so today we're gonna talk about um and I'll let Air Doobie jump in here. But this concept of being at ease, of everybody knows the fight of fight or flight response of the body, uh, which has been incredibly valuable to us as humans. Um, but as our environment changes, and some may say, probably myself, as it changes more dr- more quickly, then I think we're able to adapt as humans. Um, this fight or flight response kind of gets hijacked in a lot of ways, whether through uh, literally through science, right? Examining how how that process is triggered and then triggering us through marketing or just things that happen in life that would typically be a fight or flight response. But you know what? Perfectly fine. Nobody's trying to eat you right now. Um, and staying at ease throughout and what that does. So I'll let you speak on that a little bit and expand on that. What is the importance of it? How do you do it? What are some tips maybe you have? And, and uh, let's dive in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so the idea for me is that when we have our bodies at this state of ease, being calm, being grounded, not exerting too much or, or rather more energy than what is needed for any given task, for any given moment, When we're doing that, our bodies are able to just function at a higher level. And so you can take these concepts to your training. Are you in the state that's overly aroused, the state that's just kicked up in terms of your nervous system, uh, that's actually just causing you to impart more stress on your body than what is necessary? I think finding this state of ease and learning how to switch it like the flip of a switch is really key for just being more efficient as a human in general um, and just taking that to your daily life as well in, in aside from training. So what I do to find this ease is first of all, mindfulness. I think if you don't have the awareness to tap into the state of your nervous system, whether it's in more of a stressed state or whether it's in more of a calm state. If you don't have the ability to sense that, then you're not going to be able to consciously make the switch. But if you tap into that, if you tap into things like your heartbeat, like the rhythm of your breath, the depth of your breath, the volume of your breath, how much air are you taking in and out? Like the facial expressions you're making, are your eyes bloodshot wide open like this? Or are you relaxed and grounded like this? (laughs) And you know, a lot of people look like that um, after they drink their coffee or while they're just wired at work on the computer, like they look like that. And they're just expending more energy than they need to be. And that brings, this is maybe a little digression, but that's why people need to sleep so much. That's why people feel tired all the time because their body is just running in overdrive and they're wasting energy. So at the end of the day, it's like, damn, like I'm tired of shit. Like I got to sleep a lot. Mm, That's gold right there, bro. And, And as I continue to simplify a lot of these health principles in my head so I can provide it in bite-sized pieces to give to, to anybody that can utilize it. That's one thing I always come back to is that nutrition, especially, and, and I think you can take it in, and, and if you agree with this, expand it into the world of movement. Uh, but nutrition for me is it, it, it's bottom line is about energy. It's about energy. So it only makes sense that being at ease throughout the day, you're or in times when you don't need to be in fifth gear, you're cruising at first, second, you know, you're moving through life, you're conserving energy, which thus requires or leads you or allows you to consume way less material. And I say material because that's what's going on. We consume material and then our body has to take that material, do its magic, 
I say it's magic because it really is magic. You can't tell me any other, <laughs> you know, we haven't been able to successfully create that as humans. So it is magic. And then extract what it needs from that material to then give us energy. So we eat less because there's still material that has to be, that has to be uh, uh, expelled out of the body, right? So the less we give the, the body to do in terms of taking out the trash while we're still getting the biggest bang for our buck, keeping us at, at ease, it seems like one of the things we can utilize to help us do that is being mindful throughout our day and being at ease so you can conserve the energy you have so you're not required to consume an, ex an insane amount of energy and bear the cost. Yeah, exactly. And, and from the movement standpoint, as you alluded to, it's all about learning to make your body feel comfortable in these different positions, essentially. So whether you're sitting, whether you're standing, whether you're walking, your training, functional training is meant to, well, in my, in my opinion, the, what makes it more effective is when you have the intention of carrying it over to your daily life. You're not just training for sport. You're not just training to run faster or to jump higher. You're training to be in a more efficient state throughout life. So mm -hmm. those wall sits that you do, for instance, learning how to tone down your nervous system in those, utilize the lowest amount of muscular effort, if any muscular effort, and really just taking that to the way that you sit in your chair um, at work mm. with good alignment, good core activation, good breathing. You're literally carrying those same principles that we train in the workout, those more mindful-esque principles. You're taking those to your daily life to just be more at ease, to operate from a more grounded place, from a place of more mental clarity, more mental emotional balance. And also, as we're talking about now more specifically, at a state where you're burning through less energy. Mm. I think that's gold, man. And we clarified just now why being at ease is so valuable to us in terms of like, I think for me, for a longevity standpoint, a performance standpoint, a life standpoint, a like uh, <laughs> not crushing your telomeres standpoint uh, or using them up pretty quickly or burning the ends, whatever way you want to visualize it. Um, but I like that you give an example of how to take what we're doing in a workout, whether you're working out at a gym, whether you're working out at a, 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 a outside, whatever you consider a workout, taking that into real life. A lot of people ask this, like when I, when I train, I, you know, what are you training for? And I, and I, I always I always used to say I'm training for life, like with even without the under the deep understanding that you're explaining right now. And even the understanding that I have right now, I used to always think like, I'm training for life. Like, what, what do you mean? What am I training for? Does one always only train for an athletic event? Does one only train for some sort of fit? That's, that seems weird because most of the world doesn't participate <laughs> and doesn't participate for long in athletic events. So that, are you saying that most of the world shouldn't train? <laughs> so that's a funny question that you bring up. I, I think it's important to understand that, first of all, athletics or whatever else you're training for fits into the larger scheme of life and not the other way around. Training isn't just something we do just to train. The way that I do it, the way that I infuse um, into my program, we think of training as a booster to life. We think of training as a supplement to life in a way. You have all these different disciplines, whether you are thinking about business, you're thinking about relationships, you're thinking about your training. These are all different pieces of life that can teach us how to live life better. There are ways to experience ourselves, to kind of just look at ourselves from an internal perspective and view what's going on on inside of us projected out into the world because what do they always say about relationships about how you deal with other people it's simply a mirror of what's going on inside of you internally 
And so you take things like the limitations that people often see in their movement and in training. You see tension in the body. You see wonky breathing patterns. You see rigidity of movement. These things all directly translate when you look at it on a very deep level and you get to that place where you have the eye for it and you can see these patterns. You can see how these little things, these little nuances that are limitations in your movement and your training directly relate to limitations in your life. For instance, you're scared to enter this movement pattern, so you never do it in the gym. That directly translates to something like, oh, you're fearful to have that conversation to your boss to ask for a raise. And that's the parallels that I like to see. And that's why I like to essentially bridge the gap between meditation and training. I think we can go home. I think we're finished. <laughs> we're done. If you, if you decoded that, good for you you have just caught the sermon because that's 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 a huge that's a huge piece man i mean truthfully um because for a lot of reasons but one that comes to mind is for individuals who maybe let's take maybe individuals that like you know my body looks fine like i, I don't really have time like why would i do all that right and the one principle i heard that you didn't quite name by name necessarily but uh, as above, so below, as out, or was it out, as out, so in, like, our direct reflection or direct, like, it reminds me of Simba from Lion King, looking into the river and seeing his reflection, and then his reflection turning into his dad, you know, his dad saying, remember, and all that, it, it, it kind of reminds you of that, and that, and, and thus also makes what you're, the, the training that you're talking about, uh, I see it as like an access point. Right. So it's, it's sometimes it's tough for me to dive, to go internally. But you can almost it's as if like you're performing robotic surgery where I can access the inside through this access point of physical training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that should give everybody a reason to 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 say, man, this is this is great because. How else are you? I mean, <laughs> most of us don't have a set way that we're accessing our mm -hmm. internal, right? So we get prescribed things to do that for us rather yeah. than us be learning how to do that for ourselves and being able to, you say, at ease, but also tap in, like actually being able to maneuver your, 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 your own internal levels, like being able to change the dials as you see fit rather than just like plastic bag flowing in the wind you know that's what I, that's what I, that's what i hear that's what i hear but bro, real quick um today we're gonna keep that short so i want to give you an opportunity real quick to say like how does that translate to the program that you created for folks right this this con how do you teach that concept and and then if people tap in with you like what can they expect yeah yeah so we're essentially rewiring the way that you think about training. We're taking all of the running, all the lifting, all of that kind of stuff that you think of as characteristic of your training, and we're completely reframing it in your mind by instilling new, uh, new intentions within you, instilling new mindsets within you. Oh, it's not about I have to put this 300-pound barbell on my back. I don't have to run myself into the ground. How about if I do this movement super slow and mindfully and bring my breath into it and really think about my alignment and really think about things that will enhance the connection to your body? If you do those things, you're going to get a much more effective workout. You're going to get more effect in terms of reaching your goals, whether that's to become stronger, faster, uh, and to be able to do those things for longer. And also in the grand scheme of life, you're going to work through your blocks that, again, are characteristic of, of the limitations that you see in your movement. If you have rigidity in your motion, chances are you're going to have some rigidity, some kind of resistance 
that occurs in your life as well. And so those are the parallels that we're trying to draw in my program. Those are the parallels that we want you to see. It's not just a training program. It's not just about making your training pro uh, better, although that's obviously one of the key benefits of it is finding more efficacy in your training. It's also about connecting your training to the grand scheme of life. It's a bigger picture, and I really want people to see that. And that's the results we're providing for people in this Mind Your Movement program that we got going on now. Goodness gracious. So what I hear is uh, you give them everything and then some. <laughs> but let me break it down a little bit, actually, though, is utilizing training as an access point to go beyond what we see physically and go into the internal, right? So, guys, I mean, I, 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 we're, we're going to break this down a lot more as we go forward in, in, um, and come into you with this type of information. But I think you really want to dive into that and really think about it for a second. Like, what are the tools that we have for mental well-being, right? And can we use movement as an access point to get there? That's what my, my guy Air Doobie is talking about right now. Utilizing movement to do more than just get you physical performance more than just get you aesthetics, but to also get you mental well-being, and I would say harmony, right? Harmony in your total being so that you can get all those things that you're coming to the table with plus some, right? Plus some. How would you exactly. like to be at ease on a day-to-day -day basis? How would you like to be able to be in control of how you react to things? How would you like to have stresses come up in your life. And uh, you know what? <laughs> you know, you, you I, don't, I don't know much about Bruce Lee, but you Bruce Lee it or whatever, or you uh, 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 Master Miyagi it or something, right? We're not gonna, doesn't mean you have no expression <laughs> of self, but that you are actually in control, not the circumstance. Uh, I think it's yes, huge. Yes. Huge. That's very Ties well a lot put. of disease too. And we'll talk about that on, <laughs> on another, a lot of yeah. dis-ease. This ease, hello, uh, on that as well. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and, and you're on the same wave in, in terms of what you do with uh, the people that you work with as well. In terms of, in terms of boosting that awareness and using what you do as an access point to learn more about yourself internally. One thousand percent. One thousand percent. In fact, I'm about to get off this call right now to launch our 10 day solid food vacation juice feast for September, and that's exactly what we do. We take the 10 days to really reset your gut, right? Everybody needs this, by the way. I don't care who you are, unless you've been eating perfectly to the T and breathing perfectly to the T. Which is <laughs> and, impossible. And it, you haven't. I haven't. I don't know anybody that has. So taking the 10 days to take a step back, allow the body to catch up or the mind to catch up or the spirit to catch up, whatever you need to bring you back into harmony, resetting and the and it's not just about juice, guys. This is just the vehicle that we use. However, it's about the things that you replace when you remove the solid food. What do you replace? What do you put in its place, right? Are you taking care of yourself in the morning by going out and grounding yourself, airbrushing, or not airbrushing, but uh, dry brushing, uh, by tongue scraping, by uh, by go, doing just the activities that we have forgotten, the little things we've forgotten that actually makes a huge difference. <laughs> it actually puts our body, again, in harmony. Age doesn't kill you. Your body falling into dis-ease, your body falling into disharmony is what kills us over time. So, so you're, you're giving people a way to not only clean their gut, but to also clean their mind. 1000%. This is, the gut is, is merely the, the, um, it does a lot. There's a lot to the gut aspect of it, but it's, mm -hmm. it's what you're doing. Again, it's, it's like, yeah, anybody, I see a lot of people that drink a cup of juice and they say, I'm juice feasting. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> you drink a juice. That's great. That is great. But you're not juice feasting because juice feasting is what is about First step is obviously removing the solid foods that's harming us and replacing it by focusing on, 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 on not macronutrients, but micronutrients mm. that's easily bioavailable to us and has everything we need right then and there. 
And then to add in real quick, this is a whole nother digression that we could talk about next time. But even beyond, so there's macronutrients, there's micronutrients. You go even deeper, there's energy. There's electrons that we get from the food. And this is something that is, of course, as you're the expert on this, this is something that we can extract more efficiently from the foods and the way of eating that you promote. 1,000%. 1,000%. And, and I, by the way, you know, we'll leave you guys with this. Uh, we, we, we teach a lifestyle, both of us. We teach a lifestyle. We don't teach just simple methods. Uh, sorry, they are simple. But we don't teach just techniques and tactics. Right. We teach a, a, a way of living. Right. A way of thinking about how how does consumption work? See, we address consumption, not just by what you're putting in your mouth. The solid wise, we address consumption in terms of what are you seeing? What are you hearing? What are you smelling? What are you tasting? What are you speaking? What like all of that stuff is consumption. All of it. All of it. Right. There's a reason why music is moving in a particular direction. I was listening to the last story. I was listening to uh, some stuff with uh, my, 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 my younger siblings. And I was just paying attention to what the rhythms are doing to our hearts. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, what the, the, mm-hmm. the, the, like, everything is so high. Like, like Taking I listen us to out it. of that state of ease. Bam. That's it. Thank you for bringing it back. I listened to that. And I'm like, no wonder... You come out of, like, I, I came out of this stage of my life, like, just, like not focused, not at ease, jittery, like, all over the place, thinking I had, like, anxiety, depression, but that's just disharmony, this ease <laughs> that's working, right? So the vibrations put, that are, yeah, the vibrations that are characteristic of that, that sound penetrates you and messes with the vibrations within you. I just want to put this on here as I know uh, Aaron and Ash will be watching this video to edit it. Guys, I'm putting this idea on there before I forget. Let's talk about sevens and and, and, and uh, colors, right? Our consump- so not just are we addressing this consumption piece, um, but we're addressing like those are also our methods of healing, right? So color, <laughs> smell, aromatherapy, taste, uh, sound therapy, and guess what? Seven colors of the rainbow, seven notes, right? Seven main notes. It's like all the same things, guys. And I, I guess so. I, you know, I'm at, I'm not at ease right now because I'm mad hyped and excited. Because <laughs> this stuff is so connected when you start to really talk about it. So we'll dive into that. If that's something you guys are interested in, you want us to go through like numerology and all these different, maybe not all the numerology, but how it connects to what we do. Right. And all these different ways of consumption and also all these different ways by extension, all these different ways of, of, that we can heal ourselves. There's actually so many different ways we can heal ourselves. Right. Cancer sure. has been cured by all of these methods. Oh, we'll talk about that another day. Please don't cancel us Instagram. Yes, sir. <laughs> 10 day, 10 day juice feast, 12 week movement transformation. Tap in, folks. We're trying to have the world on another level, vibrating on a higher level. That, that's 1,000. That's the simplest way to put it. That's it. That's it. And uh, heaven is manifest. Send uh, send us both a message. Let's talk about it. Yeah, no doubt. Please. Let's talk about it. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. If you're seeing this at another time, we appreciate you. We usually go live on Tuesdays right around uh, 830. Uh, oh, wait. What are we going to start doing? 830 p.m.? 830 Eastern. Yeah, 830 Eastern. I'm on the East now. I'm usually on the West. And, you, you know, y- y'all know what it is. So we'll see you next week. And uh, please drop a topic. We're going to be posting these in our, in, our, in our feed. Drop a question. Drop a topic. Drop a suggestion. Drop. I don't care what you drop. Drop something. Drop poop emojis. I don't even care. But <laughs> <laughs> drop something. Actually, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, don't. No disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Yo, great chatting you, brother. And uh, we'll talk soon. Yes, sir. Peace, y'all. All right. Take care.